بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا أبو القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آله الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين <تصفيق> اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى جل Sisters and brothers, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We are fastly approaching the beginning of the month of Ramadan. And I thought uh, the theme for this week's uh, discussion to be focusing on something which is extremely critical as we begin the fasting process. So far, one thing which has been made clear, which I believe there will be a consensus that the beginning of the month most probably going to be m next Monday, Monday the 11th of March. According to moonsighting.com, uh, there is highly likely that this, the moon will be sighted on Sunday, uh, Sunday evening, which is Sunday the 10th. So Monday will be the, uh, the 11th will be the beginning of the month. I pray, inshallah, to bless all of us uh, during this holy month and grant us the privilege of really counting every second of this month because it's a unique opportunity for soul-searching, cleansing of this, ourselves of uh, materials that fossilized in our soul and heart for nearly 11 months, inshallah. One of the critical issues that we really need to pay attention to during the month of Ramadan is time management. That uh, we use the time and spend the time correctly so that uh, wastage of time which can be used positively in uh, our prayers, du'as, uh, invocations and everything else, we maximize the time available for us during benefit of the time during the month of Ramadan, inshallah. There is a hadith from the Holy Prophet وسلم, says, اجتهدوا في أن يكون زمانكم أربع ساعات. You should strive and aspire to have your time divided into four categories or four sections. ساعة لمناجاة الله. One portion of it to be spent in submitting to uh, getting closer to Allah and uh, establishing a relation, close relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَسَاعَةٌ لَأَمْرِ الْمَعَاشِ And portion of it to be spent on uh, what we call earning a living, uh, a, will, a lawful living. وَسَاعَةٌ لِمُعَاشِرَةِ الْإِخْوَانِ وَالثُّقَاتِ الَّذِينَ يُعَرِّفُونَكُمْ عُيُوبَكُمْ وَيُخْلِصُونَ لَكُمْ فِي الْبَاطِنِ And a portion of it <coughs> to, to be spent associating with people trustworthy, knowledgeable, that they do two things. And these are the critical criteria that we should mind, bear in mind when we try to select our friends. Number one, that they are, they point to you your shortcomings. So they don't shy away to gloss the, the shortcomings. They sit with you naturally through a right strategy but they يُعَرِّفُونَكُمْ They point to you, عُيُوبَكُمْ Your shortcomings. وَيُخْلِصُونَ لَكُمْ فِي الْبَاطِنِ And even when you are not there, deep down, they are sincere and they want the best for you. These two criteria are extremely critical in the selection that we have because most of, unfortunately, most of our time that will be wasted it's not because we wish to waste the time. It's because the surrounding that we choose for ourselves is such that they are, they care less about the fact that time, the most 
important commodity in, in our life should be spent wisely and properly. And naturally, And the last portion of it, to be spent on moral pressures of your life, which is necessary for everyone. These four, uh, four categories, uh, as we approach the month of Ramadan, uh, we should really be mindful of the kind of, uh, in the same, the same way that the beginning of the year we had our own list of the wish list that we, and resolutions that we made the beginning of the year, that I'm going to do this during this year, that during this year. During them, as we approach to the month of Ramadan, more conscientious people begin to draw a list and uh, have uh, some kind of resolutions. But primarily these resolutions center on more sp spiritual advancement and growth and more self-centering of the spirit and the heart rather than I'm going to lose weight, rather than I'm going to change job, rather than I should look for employment or anything else. So the, the, the category, the central theme in these uh, wish lists and resolutions changes. I'm going to read Quran, I'm going to read Dua, I'm going to stay late at night to do Salat al-Layl, etc., etc. The problem that we have with this kind of wish lists and resolutions and uh, the way we should organize it, I think, is to go back before we start drawing the wish list and the, the, the uh, resolutions, to go back to the previous years and look at the resolutions that we made in the previous month, month approaching to month of Ramadan and the, pre uh, the previous wish lists that we organize for ourselves. How many, what percentage of those wish lists, not only we were able to keep uh, during the month of Ramadan, but we were able to continue after the month of Ramadan. Because this is the central theme. Month of Ramadan is a period of conditioning, but the expectation is that one goes beyond the month of Ramadan and continues with it until at least closer to the next Ramadan. If, <coughs> for whatever reason, because uh, the goal set was too high, or we ha <coughs> naturally we have this apathetic nature that we are not prepared to stick to, uh, to, to the goal set, then we really need to ask ourselves, what is the purpose? of coming up with a set of new wish, uh, wish lists or resolution if we are not going to keep uh, the, the, uh, any of uh, these or at least most of it, particularly as the month of Ramadan passes by and we go back. If we look at people around us, as we were discussing this just before the lecture, before the discussion, there people can be divided into two parts or two groups. There are those who look at the month of Ramadan as a burden, that suddenly their lifestyle has been disrupted and uh, they, they, they can't wait until they, they see the back of the month of Ramadan. So if this, this group of people, which unfortunately most people, because they don't have a proper conception and understanding of what month of Ramadan is, they purely see the month of Ramadan as, a, as some kind of a command, abstinence for, from drink, food, and everything else, which is the materialistic. Then naturally these people are going to look forward for the day where the month of Ramadan is over and they can go back to their li own lifestyle that existed before. The consequence for this group of people is that as soon as month of Ramadan is over, even if they were able to achieve something, however how little that they did during the month of Ramadan, it's very difficult for them to continue with doing anything and they drift back into the old lifestyle 
which is uh, exactly what they did during, during the before the month of Ramadan. And they are not benefiting as if nothing has happened. And if we look at the khutbah Sha'baniya that the Holy Prophet وسلم, delivered as the last Jum'ah before month of Ramadan during his time, he points out around the end of that khutbah that the most cursed indivi in individual is the person that goes through this month and does not benefit spiritually and mentally or uh, anything beyond abstinence of food and drink. That's it. Uh, and at that moment, the, if you read the Khutbah Sha'bani, Amir al-Mu'mineen says that I stood up and I asked the Holy Prophet, Ya, ya Rasulullah, ma afdalu al-a'mal fi hadha al-shahr? What is the best deed what, uh, that we could, we could uh, do during, the best thing that we could do during this month? And the Holy uh, Prophet responded, Ya Ali, <coughs> afdalu al-a'mal al-wara'u an maharim Allah to stay away from sinfulness. So, uh, Tawbah and staying away from sinfulness becomes the first step towards the ultimate goal, which is Taqwa, God consciousness, not God fearing, God consciousness that we need to achieve by the end of the month of Ramadan. So, the month of Ramadan is not a month of uh, purely abstinence, but it is a mind of, uh, month of mindfulness that requires transitioning from one state of being into another state of being. A state of being that we had before the month of Ramadan, fossilized habits and uh, traits during the 11 month of the year. Now we are going into a state in which we attempt to control our thoughts, our intentions, our action, because we want to move into... Month of Ramadan becomes for us a spiritual exercise, a journey. We have talked about Sayyid and Suluk. Uh, month of Ramadan becomes an, uh, a, a spiritual exercise. And it is this, if we, if we do this correctly, the effect is going to cover literally all society. If we go uh, to our back home cultures, as the Muslims prepared themselves for the month of Ramadan, the celebration, the preparation affected even the non-Muslims in our community. They were aware that the Muslim community is moving towards Ramadan. They are preparing special things. They, uh, the, the mindset uh, their behavior, morality, ethics, and so on. And it percolated through the entire community and uh, everyone, this concept of uh, rebirth of society based on moral principle was caused because of the, that correct understanding of the, the month of Ramadan. So the month of Ramadan is going to be a gift to our heart. The question that we have to ask, are we ready to receive this gift? And if the past month of Ramadan, because of the resolutions that we did not fulfill, the wish list that we did not uh, comply with, it means that we really need to struggle as hard as possible uh, to uh, stay tuned with the demand of the month so that we, we can benefit from it. One of the critical roles and cr critical responsibilities that we have during this month is our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our relationship with Quran. Again, it is a tragedy that Quran, such an important book in our life, the life of all Muslims, we leave the book on the mantle and we don't touch it, only uh, on a special occasion, primarily the three nights of the month of Ramadan, the 19th, the 21st, and the 23rd. And we try to pack uh, into these nights speedily as much as we can, thinking that that's it, that's our responsibility during uh, the month with Quran. So Quran is one 
on one hand draws our attention to the fact that it is the book of guidance and we should not withdraw our uh, support from not only recitation of Quran but also uh, acting according to the command of the Quran. Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu in the last uh, uh, will that he left uh, for his family, Allah, Allah fil Quran. He starts his uh, uh, his wasiyah uh, and will by it saying how critical Quran was. To do what? You should practice the principles that Quran commands you. That uh, Allah, Allah fil Quran, don't leave the Quran to remain as papers or papyrus in your hand while the principle of the book is being practiced by others, by non-Muslim. So this is one of, and there is a verse in the Holy Quran, it says, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبَّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا in, in the Day of Judgment, uh, the, the uh, Holy, Qur Holy Prophet is going to complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that my ummah, my people deserted the Quran. And statistics is quite clear. We spend hours on a daily basis uh, on social media in various forms and format of it. And, uh, but when it comes to even reading useful books, according to the statistics, we only spend 12 minutes a day reciting useful book. But when it comes to Muslims, we only spend possibly on average three minutes reciting the Quran which is a shame uh, for, for every one of us. Even we don't spend time to recite the translation of the Holy Quran, let alone the Quran itself. So Quran, when it comes to time management that the Holy Prophet uh, Hadith creates a paradigm by identifying the two extreme sides. On the one hand, it says that uh, you, we, I mean humans, would only reap the benefit of the struggle and the time that they spend constructively. لَيْسَ insan إِلَّا مَسَى You, whatever, shall not deserve but the reward of the effort and the time that we spend. And on the other hand, it reminds us, warns us, that if we don't pay attention to this rare commodity that once it passes you are not going to get anything back it says that an taqula nafsun ya hasrata ala ma farrattu fi janbillah the day will come that we stand before allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regretful of the time that we wasted uh, uh, the time that we wasted uh, uh, during our life and uh, we did not use it constructively. We didn't get benefit from it. So how do we start? We shouldn't wait for the month of Ramadan. Those of you who were present during the lecture of Rajab and Shaman, I repeatedly said that we really need to uh, use these two months on, uh, uh, to move spiritually forward and uh, uh, demand, I mean, uh, structure our life. Don't wait for the month of Ramadan to come to start reciting Quran. Make it a daily habit that we recite Quran uh, slowly and, uh, uh, and, uh, and nourish, uh, use the Quran on a daily basis at night and uh, daily in the morning and, uh, and any other occasion that we get a chance. There is a letter that went to Allama Taba Taba'i by a young man in Iran asking him to guide uh, the, the, this young man of some kind of a spiritual path that he should take, as uh, whether it was before month of Ramadan or generally. And uh, the Marhum uh, Allama Taba Taba'i writes, I've seen the letter, writes in response with his own handwriting and encourages uh, or advises this young man uh, not only to do muhasaba, which is the second point I'm going to raise just now, it, uh, to five surahs at night before he goes to sleep. Surat al-Hadid, uh, Surat al-Saf, 
Surat al Jum'a, Surat al Taghabun, and I've forgotten the, the fifth uh, surah. These are the five surahs which I'm going to list them and put them on the website. Uh, during this month, it's critical. As you sit down uh, before you go to sleep, uh, uh, to pay attention to the uh, uh, to what you ha we have done during this uh, the day and ask ourselves. Uh, the next one that we really need to pay attention to is correcting our intention with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because ultimately the verse in the Holy Quran, Quran 183 Surah Al-Baqarah لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Taqwa is a unique relational uh, issue with Allah. So we have to correct our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through constantly a muhasaba. Which muhasaba is con constantly asking ourselves whenever we want to do something, is this what Allah wants me to do it? Or does this get me closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not? If not, then we should step, step away. Uh, that the, there is another hadith crudely translated. It says that the essence of taqwa is not to be in a place where Allah doesn't want you to be and to be in a place where Allah wants you to be. That's the essence of taqwa in a simple uh, uh, word. So we ask ourselves uh, the same thing. Whenever we want to do something uh, during the day, and uh, it does, is this the right thing to do? So that is muhasaba. Quran, as I said, uh, we need to start uh, dealing with it. We have about a week left. Start fasting right now. And the last 10 days of uh, uh, Shaban is very critical. Uh, the Holy Prophet, according to a hadith, uh, he used to wrap up and put his uh, sleeping and material or bedding material on one side and during the night of the last 10 days of the month of Shaban, spend it on uh, worshipping, invoking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking for forgiveness, etc, etc. During my days in Hawza, this was a norm in which we, we went for a itikaf, uh, either Masjid al-Sahla or Masjid al-Kufa. Or these days, uh, the students in Qom, they go to Masjid Jamkaran or some other massages that are far away from uh, the, the hustle and bustle of the, uh, the uh, daily life to be able to spend the last 10 days of Shaban mentally and spiritually preparing uh, to, for the arrival of the month of Ramadan. So I pointed out one group of people that... Uh, they really consider the month of Ramadan as a burden. And there is another group, however small, these are the ones that are looking forward to the arrival of the month of Ramadan because they consider the month of Ramadan as an, uh, call it the most opportune moment that we can rectify our shortcomings during the past, what has happened to us during the last 11 months. Go and read, I believe is Dua number 40 and 41 of Sahih al sajjadiyah Dua number 40 is the Dua that Imam Zain al-Abideen welcomes the month of Ramadan, that he recites it or recited it at the time of the sighting of the moon for the month of Ramadan. And see how delighted he is of the arrival of the month and how uh, he hopes to use the time constructively during this, this month to be able to even elevate his own soul uh, further up and get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then look at the lament that he has at the time of the departure of the month of Ramadan, as if a father or a mother losing one of the dearest loved children, that uh, 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 this opportune moment is no longer there. And nobody knows whether Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to grant us the privilege that we will be present up to the next year, next Ramadan. And we all know uh, if we look at our friends and associates, there were those last year that were, were with us and they are no longer around. So this issue of uh, uh, fasting and preparing ourselves and du'as, supplications, in, invocation, dhikr, Allah has commanded us to do. Ad'uni. 
you pray, you invoke, I would respond. And in Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, after the issue of fasting that uh, Allah uh, makes mentions, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي If my servants ask you, where is God? Tell them that I'm near. But I would respond when they invoke. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةِ الدَّاعِي إِذَا دَعَانِ You ask and I would respond. So this is something critical during this month uh, that we should uh, spend huge amount of time particularly cutting down on wasteful exercise, particularly this uh, attachment to the gadgets that uh, we really need uh, to remove huge amount of time that we, we are wasting on that. If you remember during the time that we were discussing the issue of uh, uh, Sayyid and Suluk, one of the condition was Sunt during month of Rajab and month of Shaban. And sunt was means that to really restructure our lifestyle, that on silence, unless we are required to speak, rather than knee-jerk reaction to talk and find, it, uh, find silence to be very difficult. At the moment, the social media has conditioned us to the point of knee-jerk instantaneous response to any kind of email, uh, WhatsApp, face Facebook, Snap, anything that comes in, I need to stop everything. Even if I recite Quran in the middle of recitation of the Quran, I need to respond to, 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 to these uh, messages that come in. The idea of shifting the mindset to not saying anything, and uh, uh, unless it is necessary, this is this requires one of the jihads that month of Ramadan is an uh, uh, opportune moment to create. Marhum Hussaini Tehrani said, Muhammad Hussain Tehrani, uh, he was a student of uh, Marhum Taba Tabai, and he said that we used to go uh, to see him, our professor or our uh, uh, Arif and the somebody, our teacher that we listened to. And in most cases, when we went to see Marhum Taba Tabai, even uh, Muhammad Hussain uh, Tehrani's son uh, actually has one or two occasions that he associated with Barhun Tabatabai and uh, uh, saw this, uh, that said that for a long period of time we sat in silence. We never spoke anything until, say, uh, we started to ask question, how are you, Mulana? So and he would respond. So the notion of this instantaneous need or desire to respond to various messages that come and wasteful time that most 99% of them are useless. Uh, garbage dumped from one uh, WhatsApp page into another. And then you take this garbage from your page and you dump it somewhere else. And it goes in circulation. Facebook, the same thing. Why should I know about what you ate yesterday uh, in your re in restaurant when you went out with your friends, but you have to spend huge amount of time communicating about this, take pictures, sit around, and then uh, uh, people s having to respond, oh yes, what a delicious food, etc., etc. It's women ilmin la yanfa, as that the dua says. It's part of the knowledge is that is not going to be beneficial. I mean. What benefit do I get from uh, the lobster that you ate last night, which technically from a religious point of view is haram, uh, or at least according to most scholars, uh, and you have this lo pictures and everything else. What benefit knowledge of knowing what you ate last night is going to have in my life? Yes, if you come up with a new uh, way of telling me I have found out a new uh, way of re uh, reciting Quran, or memorizing Quran, that's useful. Or learning Arabic or something else, that's useful. Or there are uh, po uh, uh, poems that you, you should read and f uh, focus on them because they encourage you to uh, be spiritually mindful, that's uh, useful. But what you ate uh, and where did you go and 
a group of people went to this restaurant or that re restaurant and the pictures all over that's your your Facebook LinkedIn the same thing uh, WhatsApp the same thing the 99 percent of the time that we spend on social media can be removed quite safely and the time that you have, you can use it constructively. Uh, do du'a, do salat al uh, Go to sleep early and then wake up early to do salat al -layl. And munajat, du'a, du'a sahar, uh, du'a Abu Hamza Thawali, etc., etc. Recite Quran with tadabbur, reflection. Quran is a line of communication by Allah to us. Our du'a invocation and supplication is our line of communication from us to go to Allah. These are the two lines that we should strengthen during the month of Ramadan. We have to be mindful of what we, uh, our, what we hear, what we, what we watch, what, what we say. Most of the sins of backbiting, slander, uh, and uh, demeaning others and so on uh, it comes from the tongue how isn't shouldn't we spend the month of Ramadan controlling the tongue every time uh, we are going to say something we ask is this what I say gets me closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is a verse in the Holy Quran uh, that says on the day of judgment People who go to, he to hell will be asked, what did you do that you deserve this position or, or you, uh, you're punished for it? One of the things that they say, we followed the crowd. We followed the crowd. So they defined the line of conversation and we fell into it and we continued with it without thinking that this is, could be uh, demeaning. It could be riba, it could be tuhma, it could be uh, back, whatever it is. These characteristics could be uh, uh, slowly, slowly changed and removed. Remember, in essence, our responsibility during the month of Ramadan and the concept of taqwa can be reduced down to two obligations. Removal of the sinful deeds once the heart has been purified, then slowly beginning to replace those sinful deeds with pure deed and action that we, we need to do. Uh, so that, and the only way we can do that is by using the gift of dua and supplication and invocation that is open to us during the month of Ramadan. Khutbah uh, Shaabaniya paints a unique picture for us that during the month Shaitan is chained, the door to heaven is open, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all the sins, just move, get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nawmakum fiha ibadah, even your sleep is a worship, why? Because it's a methodology to teach you to control, when during the sleep you are not talking. Most of our sinfulness happened during the day, during the night when we are sleeping, even there's nothing. There is no mind, the mind gone somewhere else. But it's the, this long period of the day, from the moment we wake up until the moment that we go to sleep, is the period that those fossilized habits really control our behavior. And it's only the way during this period changes that we can do during this period that ultimately would dictate whether beyond the month of Ramadan we can continue with this purification and rejuvenation of the soul, or we fail. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the privilege of uh, really being able to understand, conceptually comprehend what month of Ramadan is. And then moving into it during whatever days left for us, during a uh, few days left, gradually or, and quickly getting into the, the, the habit and to the mindset of self-centering ourselves and getting ready for the month of Ramadan. May, and uh, inshallah, by going through the month properly, we may be, uh, have, have the uh, privilege 
of continuing some of the good deeds that we did during the month of Ramadan after, inshallah. And that's the concept of taqwa. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.